Welcome back to your science class. Today we will see heating effect of electric current. For that you have to make a circuit like this which is shown in the figure. You have to take a long piece of nichrome wire or you can take any wire and you have to tie it between two nails. As you can see here in the figure, between two nails you have to uh, tie any wire, not necessarily nichrome wire. You can wire, uh, put any wire in between this. And then you have to make the circuit. You have got one cell. Okay. And now this is in the off position. Okay. You can see the circuit is broken. That means the switch is off. You have to touch the wire and see. When you touch the wire, you will see that it is in the normal room temperature. Then after that, what you have to do, you have to switch on the current by moving the switch on the on position. And after some time, what you have to do, you have to again switch off the current or you can say you can put off the switch and then again you have to touch these wires in between, the nichrome wire. When you touch this wire, you will see that it has become hot, the nichrome wire. Okay, and this is called as heating effect of electric current. What is it called as? Heating effect of electric current. And this heating effect of electric current is used nowadays in many of the things. At home, we all use the, these are the heaters, isn't it? These are the electric you have got the heater, then you have got the electric room heater. Nowadays, children, it's very cold. And what do we use at home? We use the electric heater or electric room heater or the blowers. And what do these contain? All these contain these coil, coil like this. Okay. And this coil is called as an element. So what is an element? The coil of wire, this coil of wire is called as the element and you must have often noticed that whenever you switch on all these appliances whether it is the heater whether it is the room heater electric heater or even the press the electric iron okay which we use for pressing the clothes all these see here many examples are given immersion heaters hot plates iron geysers electric kettles hair dryers they all have element like this inside them and they all all these work on the heating effect of electric current because of the element inside them okay they become heated up and this heating up of electric current is very useful for us as you can see all these items that we use at home they all are based on the heating effect of electric current clear children so i hope that this much is clear then uh, you have got uh, and how this heating effect takes place. See, uh, the heating effect the, or the amount of heat produced in any of the wire depend on the material. Okay, it depends on the material. It depends on the length and the thickness. See, in the beginning, I told you that you have to use a nichrome wire. I use the term nichrome. Why did we use nichrome? Because nichrome is a very good conductor of heat and it gets nichrome wire, it he gets heated up very fast. So usually the nichrome metals, uh, nichrome elements are used in all these elements which become very, very hot. So uh, the amount of heat produced in any wire depends on the material, the length and the thickness of the wire. So according to our requirement, the wires of different materials and different lengths or thickness are used. The wires which are used for making electric currents, uh, that is the ones which we use at our home, that is for electricity, they do not become very hot. Okay. Whereas on the other hand, the elements of some electric appliances become very hot and they are easily visible. Some of them become so hot that they are visible. The one of the example is the filament of a bulb. You all have studied in class 6. See, even the bulb, the filament of the bulb. When you put on the switch, the bulb glows. Why does the bulb glow? Because the filament becomes so hot. It is so hot that it starts glowing. Okay. Then you have got nowadays, you all know that the electric bulb, the tube light, the CFL and the LED 
what is the full form of cfl the full form of C cfl is compact fluorescent lamps okay and the full form of led is light emitting diode so what does this do all this this means that all these incandescent electric bulbs nowadays are often used for lighting but what do they do they give out heat lots of heat is evolved okay and when lot of heat is evolved means it will consume more electricity that means it is wastage of electricity but nowadays you all know that fluorescent tube lights and cfls are used why because they consume less electricity they do not become very hot they do not become as hot as the bulb or you can say the the bulb that we use at home okay so they are uh, better electric efficient they are called as electricity efficient sources for producing light even the led bulbs also they consume less electricity as compared to uh, incandescent bulb or the fluorescent tubes or cfl that is why we all use led bulbs nowadays we uh, led bulbs are very very common at our houses and whenever children we are using any electric gadgets we should go for buy those products only which have got isi mark on them okay isi mark is the standard mark and which isi marks gives you the guarantee okay it is a mark it is give it gives the uh, guarantee that the product is very very good or it can be used very properly okay so whenever you are buying any electric items you should go for the isi mark then we have got the uh, the electric bulb i already told you that the electric bulb it gets heated up to such a high temperature that it starts glowing okay and uh, it glows so much that it produces electricity so children uh, for today for today's class we will do only uh, this much the rest we will continue in the next class thank you